हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय न्यू लेक्चर दिस लेक्चर इज रिलेटेड विद पार्टिकल साइज एनालिसिस बिफोर स्टडिंग द पार्टिकल साइज एनालिसिस सो ऑल ऑफ यू कैन ओवरव्यू द प्रीफेस ऑफ दिस बुक you can see here on the top particle size analysis in pharmaceuticals and other industries this book is written by theory and practices well this is written by clive washington PhD Department of Pharmaceutical School of Pharmacy, University of Nottingham. This is New York, London, London, Toronto, Sydney, Singapore. This book is first published in 1992 by Ellis Harwood Limited Market Cross House, Copper Street, Chichester's West, Sussex Pew. 19 ieb england this edition published uh, in the taylor and ponces e library 2005 to purchase your own copy of this or any taylor and ponces you can see here all the this data have been given you can see here library of congress so this published data is available from publisher now look at this is table of content and table of content you can see the preface the basic principle range of particle size in units measurement of particle size distribution of particle size incrementals and cumulative distribution number area and mass distribution characterization of distributions measures of central tendency moment of distribution and moment notations measure of dispersions measure of distribution shape model distribution the normal distribution long normals and then the uh, particle shapes identification of specific distribution then sample selection and preparations sample selection selection of primary sample so this is actually the table content so first of all we should take a start from the particle size analysis what are the basic principles of particles so the study of particles dimensions is of central importance in many area of technology virtually all of the solid materials which are in common use are at some point in a powder or granular form examples can easily be found in the pharmaceuticals drugs and excipients foods grain flour sugar and material technology ceramics abrasives and building materials sand and cements the main reason for an interest in the dimensions of these particulates is that it influences their physical properties and also the way that they respond to various production processes some of the better known influence of particle size on the behavior of pharmaceuticals or the particle size influences the dissolution profile so small particle size it can dissolve more rapidly than large ones so which is importance not only in determining the behavior of the drug and in view for example dissolution in the gastrointestinal fluid but also in the various manufacturing process the flow property of powders they are strongly dependent on the particle size and its and and, pa and particulates or particle shape since most powders they are moved from one place to another for examples from from storage silo to reaction vessels by flowing the control of flow behavior is highly important generally coarse or roughly uh, spherical uh, particles flow much more easily than small or elongated particles the deposition of air borne particles on surfaces is dependent on size and this is of considerable significance in the study of aerosol formulation and their 
deposition in the various regions of the lung. The basic principles, the stability of the dispersions, such as suspension and emulsion, which depend on the size of the dispersed material. So the pores between the colloidal particle that is also depend on their dimensions and the settling rates of the larger particles, which is totally dependent on their size and density. No doubt, many other examples will occur to the readers. Range of the particle sizes and units. We could describe a particle as a region of one pace bounded by another. A description which would fit both a liposome of dimension 10 raised to power minus 8 meters and a boulder of dimension 1 meters. So the pharmaceutical system usually are confined to a narrow size range and we will rarely be required to consider particle larger than a few millimeters. So 1 mm is equal to 10 raised to power minus 3 m meters and diameters. Most process feedstocks lie in the range of 1 mm. 1 mm to 10 micrometers. So this micrometers or 1 micrometer is equal to 10 to the power minus 6 meter. We can usefully dry boundary at 1 micrometer between these larger system and the smaller particulates which are normally considered to lie in the colloidal range. So colloidal systems, colloidal systems are of increasing the importance on pharmacy. So their normal size range is from 10 nanometers, nanometer, 1 nanometer is equal to 10 raised to power minus 9 meter to 1 micrometer. So examples include the well-known liposomes, parental fat emulsion and some microsphere system. 1 micrometer forms a useful boundary. Since the property of colloidal material, they are often very different to those of cursor system. And the technique used to study them are quite distinct from those used for larger particulates. Some older size units uh, which the reader may encounter are the micron. So one micron is equal to one micrometers. Lordly and engineering units and in the colloidal size range, the angstrom. So 10 one angstroms. You can say 10 angstrom is equal to one nanometers. And you know, you are, so angstrom is the unit of length. So 10 angstrom is equal to 1 nanometers. Measurement of particle size. So we have already been using a length to describe the particles with the intention that it indicates the distance from one side of the particle to its opposite sides. The description is unambiguous. In the case of spherical particles, for example, an emulsion droplet or a microsphere, but becomes weak if the particles is irregular, so there are many material, and the problem is solved by coating the particle size of the non-spherical particle is the diameter of the spherical, which is in some way equivalent to the particle, such as sphere is strong, is an equivalent sphere, and the diameter is an equivalent diameter. A few examples will make this clear, since hypothetically we can wait a particles and can measure in its density, we can find the particular volumes. The volume equivalent sphere is the sphere, which is the same volume as the irregular particle and it and is characterized by the volume equivalent diameter. If we say then an irregular particle, particle has a volume equivalent diameters of one micrometer, so we mean that it has the same volume as a spherical particles of diameter one micrometer. Alternatively, if we have the surface area of irregular particles, so we can define the surface equivalent diameter is the diameter of the uh, spherical particle having the uh, same uh, surface area as the irregular particles. So there are large number of ways of defining the equivalent diameter, which is already given in the table 1.1. Many of them have their origins and some practical particle sizing measurement. For example, the Stokes equivalent diameter is the diameter of sphere, which is the same of the free falling velocity as the particle of the interest in a sedimentation experiment and the sieve equivalent diameter and the diameter of sphere, which just passes uh, through the same square uh, mesh sieve as the irregular particles. In selecting a suitable equivalent uh, diameter to describe a particulate system, 
we should bear in mind that all of the equivalent diameters available to us will generally be different different for a given irregular particles if we measure for example the volume the surface and stroke equivalent diameter for a particle so they will all be numerically different unless of course our particle really is a sphere consequently to obtain a quick description of the particle system we should select an equivalent diameter and associated measurement technique which is relevant to the property of the particles that uh, we are interested in thus for examples if we wish to study the sedimentation property of the materials that in how much time so it will settle down so we would select the strokes and pre-falling diameter as the descriptors if we have interested in the pigment covering power of the material so it would be sensible to measure the projected area diameter by microscopy so if we were mainly interested in the properties of the particles as an airborne aerosol so the are uh, depositions in the lungs and the aerodynamics diameters as measured by the inertial impaction methods would be relevant look at table 1.1 there are some equivalent diameter this one is simple so this is the representation of this you can see this is volume diameter which can be represented by dv this is definition is the diameter of the sphere with the same volume as the particle while this one is surface diameter so surface diameter can be represented by ds so it is the diameter of the sphere with the same surface area as the particles drag diameter drag diameter can be represented by a capital letter and small letter d so the diameter of the sphere having the same viscous drag is the particle and the fluids at the same velocity also term the aerodynamic diameter and aerosol studies if the fluid is air stokes diameter can be represented by small letter d and sk this is stoke diameter diameter of the spheres of similar density having the same limiting velocity when falling under the gravity in the viscous medium projected area projected area is represented by capital small letter d and p diameter of a circle having the same area as the projection of the particles while this one is a ferrets diameter can be represented by df so the mean value between the pairs of the parallel tangents to the projected outline of the particles and another one is martin diameter which can be represented by a letter capital small d and capital letter n so this means that the cot length of the projected outline of the particles so inshallah in my next lecture uh, we will discuss about the distribution of the particle size how the particle size they are distributed you you can see here the histogram representation of particle size and the data this is histogram particle size variations and this is very product your book okay so inshallah we will uh, onward we'll just give you a special presentation all these topics okay okay so inshallah uh, this will be our next presentation uh, wish you all the best